on my, sus my suspension, uh, all, the, all the control arms are parallel. Now, the, as, as far as, you know, how the, all those, those uh, angled, uh, angled control arms work, we talk a lot about that in the academy in the suspension and geometry section and, you know, what's, what's good and what's bad about them. Uh, but the reason that manufacturers angle the control arms is so that the axle becomes self-centering. If the axle is self-centering, they don't have to put like a panel bar in. And that's uh, more cost effective. And the older Mustangs, I think they were out like maybe three to five degrees on the on the on the bottom and about 40, 45 degrees the other way on the top. Uh, the new 197s, they're out about maybe four or five degrees on the bottom. However, uh, if you do if you're doing geometry uh, and we're taking, let's say we're taking a look at the suspension from up high looking down, plan view. Uh, if you were to take the, the angle of those control arms and draw a line to where they intersect, and in the, one, in the 197s intersect you know, well behind the car, and take that line and draw it through the roll center, which in the stock Mustang is pretty high, then all of a sudden that gives you kind of a roll axis. And uh, the roll axis of a stock Mustang is kind of like up in the air. Uh, rear, sus rear suspension roll axis, it kind of points up in the air. So what I do is on our... our uh, AGS 4.0 rear grip kit. Uh, we actually, I have offset bushings uh, front and rear so that we move the, the, uh, the front in and the back out. So we end up with a parallel, parallel to center line control arm. And when we're parallel to center line, what that does is that all of a sudden you don't have any line of conversion. So we have no, so without a line of conversion, that means the intersection point is infinity. At that point, what happens is all of a sudden, then you take the rear roll, uh, roll center, and then the roll axis is parallel to the lower control arm, and which we mostly try to have down just a little bit in the front to create rear uh, roll understeer. Uh, but see, the, having the control arms straightened out is only one part of our AGS 5.0, 4.0 suspension system. Uh, and specifically the rear grip kit, because there's a lot of elements that make the whole rear grip kit work. Now, I kind of, uh, for those that maybe haven't uh, heard a lot about the rear grip kit, I'm going to go through it again, just kind of briefly, that's so that you know, it's a system. But yeah, we, we sell control arms uh, and everything else, but more, we'd rather sell the entire system because every single component is engineered specifically to work with every other single component. So like this, by having the, uh, the uh, control arm, also notice these are really light, aluminum radius rods. And I, I drop down to, uh, you know, most people use a great big clunky three-quarter rod in. Uh, I drop down to the uh, five-eighths, but we use a super high-grade, super high-grade professional level uh, five-eighths rod in that's Teflon lined, so there's no noise and, and, long, and it lasts a long time. So, but the, the, the whole idea, this, this works with, by going parallel, that works with the roll center. Okay, speaking of the roll center, what we do, where the, where the panel bar crosses the center line of the car, that's your rear roll center. That's the point that the back of the car wants to roll around, like going through a corner. And if you've got a stock suspension, I'm sure that you felt going around the corner, like the inside tire gets a little loose. Or, or it gets light, and if you get to the gas too soon, the back of the car gets kind of whippy. So by moving the, uh, the, the panel bar down, you see how much we move the panel bar down. From there down to there. By moving the panel bar down, uh, we lower the roll center at the bottom of the differential, which is pretty much as theoretically as low as you can get a roll center on the live axle car, I said theoretically. I'm back, you know, the, uh, everybody says, well, what's the link panel bar, what's the difference? Uh, what's link actually is better the, at, at, at centering the axle. It's the best way to center the axle. However, wherever that center pin is, that's your roll center. And you can never get that roll center down very low, uh, like we do with, with the panel bar at the bottom of the differential. In the Trans M days, we used to take and mount the what's link horizontal to the bottom of the differential, so we get the benefits of a watch, but we also have the, the, the roll center on the bottom of the diff. Well, that's what we do with, with the roll center relocation kit. 
because we move it all the way down to the bottom of the differential. And again, we have a really nice, super heavy duty uh, aluminum radius rod. Uh, it looks, it actually look really cool underneath the car. So that's kind of how the roll center is working with the lower control arms. Okay, so what else works together? Well, the ax axle brackets, our axle brackets and the upper control arm module uh, is how that is, is kind of, they work together too. Now, this, these are our axle brackets and um, sure you've seen a lot of other people's axle brackets out there that have a lot of holes and a great big you know, part of the thing comes up in the back and it's, you know, they, they seem clunky. This is, this is pretty straightforward and you can notice there's only one hole. Uh, the reason for that is I've already done the engineering and I've picked the location for the lower control arm that creates the instant center I'm looking for. Now, what is the instant center? The instant center is you look at the car sideways, and again, if you draw a line, lower control arm, upper control arm, the point of conversion is called the instant center, and wherever the instant center is dictates how much anti-squat there is in the car or how fast you get weight on the tires for traction. And the other part of that is the upper control arm module works together with the axle brackets. Now this is different, you probably did a lot different than anything else you've seen out there for a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, the control arm's longer than the stock. Secondly, the pickup point has been moved. Like I say, I, I put the pickup points for the lower control arm and the upper control arm, so I get the instant center I'm looking for, so I'm getting the anti-squat I'm looking for. And the thing about this is you notice the, our uh, up, uh, upper control arm is curved. <laughs> Well, there's a really good reason for that. When we run cars, you know, fairly low on track or even on the street, if you hit a big bump and you've got a straight uh, upper control arm, it, it's going to crash into the, into the tunnel. So I don't know why more people don't curve their upper control arms, but uh, we do, and it works very well. So that's kind of like an entire system that works together. So if you've got the upper control arm module, the axle brackets, are creating the instant center, which is anti-squat. And anti-squat is also anti-lift, under braking, so the back of the car doesn't want to hop up. And then the, the panner bar moves all the way down to the bottom to the front, so the lower to the roll center. And <clears throat> the lower control arms are parallel, so we, we bring the roll axis down parallel to the, uh, to the lower control arms. The other thing about bringing the rear roll center down, if you've gone around a quarter fast in a Mustang, it feels like, first thing you feel, as you turn in and it kind of let you start to get some understeer or a push. Uh, and that's because what's happening is the front roll center and the lowered Mustang is really low. It's, it's like at ground or below ground and the rear is really high. So it's kind of like this. So as you go into a corner and the car starts to roll, it's rolling all that weight up on the outside front tire, which is why you get, you can turn in, but then you get like understeer through the corner and then you have to wait for the axle to settle because again, the roll center is high to get back to the gas. That's a typical Mustang going around the corner. But what we, what I do with, with the AGS 4.0, the, the rear suspension, obviously we bring the rear roll center down. The front grip kit, we bring the front roll center up so it's a lot flatter, which means going around the corner, you're not rolling up on that outside tire, which means we're taking a lot of the, uh, the uh, understeer away. And plus we've got other geometry in, in the uh, front grip kit that helps the car. I mean, the cars just turn. You know, it's not like pe people are amazed how they're used to fighting with understeer through a corner and with a rear grip kit, front grip kit, the cars just turn. In fact, my suspension only has three components, the rear grip kit, the front grip kit, the springs and shocks. So, and like I say, all the engineering is done. All you have to do is bolt it on, follow instructions, and the cars will handle like crazy. Uh, so also by front roll center up, rear roll center down, the car doesn't push as much through the corner, and you don't have to wait as long uh, for the for the axle to settle, so you get back to the gas a lot sooner, which means you're making the next straightaway longer. And because we've got anti-dive in the front and anti, anti-lift in the back, you, you can brake a lot later than anybody else, which makes that straightaway longer. So we make the straightaways longer and the corner shorter because the car will rotate really well with the front geometry and then the way we do the roll centers. So, you know, that gets back to the original question. I don't, I don't do uh, splayed control arms. Everything I do is parallel. 
Uh, but if you do parallel control on, you have to use something to, to locate the axle, lateral location of the axle. In this case, it's the panner bar. But, but like I say, you know, factory cars that, that have double splayed uh, control arms, that's simply because they use that to center the axle. Uh, so it makes it simple and, and inexpensive for the manufacturers.